Russell continues to evolve. He's a constant learner. This past year, when he was 29, he came to Orange County and we would work out for five hours at 5 a.m. At that age, most guys in the league think they know it all. He wanted to work on his post game, on footwork in the post. He realized that was the next step in his evolution and key to his longevity. Kobe Bryant. I was wrong about Russell Westbrook. Earlier this month, I made an argument that he hurts his team rather than helps it in the long run. Well, that used to be true at least. Now, Russ has evolved his game. Had I listened to Kobe, I might have seen this coming. Russ is shooting less threes and becoming one of the best versions of himself we have ever seen. It's ironic that he had to go to the most three-point obsessed team to virtually take that out of his game. But the craziest part of all of this, no one on the Rockets told him to take fewer threes. He's just doing it on his own. In this video, we'll explore why Russ made his game-changing decision, how this ties into trading Clint Capella, and what this means for the playoffs. Subscribe to AM Hoops if you haven't already. We come out with five quality NBA videos Monday through Friday. They drop at 6 Eastern. Hey, I'm Casey Kiernan, host here of the AM Hoops YouTube channel. Hit me up on Twitter as well, at Casey Kiernan, and over on IG, at AM Hoops. In recent years, there's been a media revolt against Russell Westbrook. You may have seen that. Russell Westbrook's a stat pattern in the regular season. He's going to win awards. He's not built for the playoffs. And for the third year in a row, I'm not a hater. Even though he averaged a triple-double in three straight years and won MVP, it became the smart thing to hate on Russ. And I hate to break it to Russ fans, they were right. Westbrook left OKC as a career 30% three-point shooter who was not afraid to chuck it. Yeah, he would get his stats, but he ruled the team in Oklahoma City. As long as an inefficient guy was dominating the offense, it did hurt the team. His athleticism has always been breathtaking. He kills teams in transition and kills the highlights. But when about 80% of NBA possessions are in the half court, that's a problem. But still, Houston GM Daryl Morey has a philosophy. Just get the best guys on a team together, figure it out later. So they traded Chris Paul plus first round picks in 2024 and 26, plus two pick swaps for Russell Westbrook. So this season began and we were all wondering how would Russell Westbrook fit in with James Harden? What would they look like on the court together? Well, for us, his game looked pretty much the same as in OKC. The first 25 games of the year, he averaged five three-point attempts per game, but shot 23% from deep. Over a season, that would be the worst three-point percentage ever for a guy taking that many threes. Then he started to change. From game 26 of the season to the new year, he attempted just 4.4 threes per game, still on an awful 22% clip. But since January 1st, that's plummeted to just 2.3 threes a game. And really it's just more evidence that Russ is actually superhuman. He can make a New Year's resolution, stick to it, and he's a better man for it. And the media who talked all that trash about Westbrook's game started to take notice. They asked Mike D'Antoni about it early on, and the coach was quick to back up one of his MVPs. But I think he just said, hey, you know, I'm getting to the hole. And he kind of changed that, I think. Now, you're going to talk to him, but he went from, from sometimes pulling up and then get to the rim, or then now it's always to the rim, and every once in a while pull up when he's got it going. So he's done a great job. Is that a conversation that you guys no, have? No, he, yeah, that's why he's MVP. You don't... You know, they're, they're, they do things out on the floor. I have no idea how they're doing it. You know, there's, you don't coach that. That's greatness. And he, he, figured, he figured it out. And sure enough, other numbers began to improve as well. His field goal percentage over that same time frame has gone from 43% to 43% to 52%. And that's because Russ is taking more of that one shot. We all know he scores above league average. And that's at the rim. But getting to the rim is that much harder when your team's got a big who can't shoot threes, who clogs up the lane, named Clint Capella. And for all that talk before the season about how Russ and James would fit in, there wasn't enough talk about Capella's fit with this team. The Rockets just cannot afford to have two bad three-point shooters, and so getting rid of the less valuable of the two in Capella just made sense. And the numbers told us that a trade might be coming, 
Houston this year was 10 and one without Clint Capella and their number of pick and roll possessions had dropped from 21% last year to just 15.5% this season. So basically in a nutshell, this trade maximizes the skill of their two stars, James Harden and Russell Westbrook. And Mike D'Antoni even admitted why they made the trade after Capella was out of town and Rocco was in a Rockets uniform. I mean, we just look and see what, how we can maximize this team. It doesn't have to do it, that way to make a state, though they're trying something crazy. We play better this way we're playing. Now, it might not be good enough, and, uh, but we do think it's better than what it was. And if it is, then we have a better chance to win. That's kind of all we're doing. Exactly. So while the whole world is out there saying, oh, the Rockets are trying something we've never seen before, or they're crazy, they're just experimenting with the game like they always do. No, this was out of necessity. They had to make this move based on the Russell Westbrook trade months before. Now, with Westbrook playing more efficient basketball, he can drive more often into an unclogged lane and kick out to another shooter in Robert Covington. Westbrook changing his game, plus this trade, will maximize this current Rockets offense. Plus, they've got two open roster spots, so don't rule out them adding a little bit more size to add to what Bruno Caboclo will give them when healthy. But of course, this could just all blow up in their face. Protecting the rim will be a problem, rebounding too. But the numbers said even with Capella, they weren't elite at either of those anyway. Let's not lose focus though of the question that all these moves are trying to answer, which is can the Rockets win an NBA title this year? Probably not, but they've got a better chance now at least than before the Clint Capella Rocco trade. And the truth is, they're gonna be screwed if they don't win an NBA championship. That's because the Rockets have dug themselves into a gigantic hole. Remember those two first round picks that they traded to get Russell Westbrook? Well, they traded another one in the Robert Covington deal just to get Nene and Gerald Green's contracts off their books. Their new owner, Telman Fertitta, says money is no object, but the Rockets have forced their way under the luxury tax in back-to-back -back years. In all, the Rockets have traded five first round assets, plus basically cleaned out their second round picks to get to where they are now. We thought the Brooklyn Nets situation was bad. Houston is on the hook for the next six and a half years. So yeah, the Rockets have to win basically right now or maybe next year, or they will have given away their future with nothing to show for it. The Rockets are like a guy who takes out a 10 year loan to get a shiny used car. And by the time the bill is paid, he's driving the biggest hoopty on the block. But you know what? I don't think the Rockets front office really cares. This is the classic case of making a move today that the next guy is gonna have to pay for. Rockets GM Daryl Morey was already on thin ice after that Hong Kong tweet cost the league and its players over 150 million bucks. No telling what it did to the value of the Rockets franchise. Morey might as well go all out while he's still running the Rockets. Coach Mike D'Antoni is on the last year of his contract. This could be it for him not just in Houston, but an NBA coaching period if he wants to retire. James Harden and Russ are on the other side of 30 years old, so what do they care what the Rockets' future looks like? This is all about now, and the entire franchise is operating like it. You know who should care, though, is the new owner, Tillman Fertitta. Fans are going to hate this guy in a few years. The old owner was a guy named Leslie Alexander. He was a well-liked guy who won two championships starting one year after he bought the team. If Fratita cares at all about what the people of Houston think about him, then he should be more careful about selling out the future just to get under the luxury tax. And don't get me wrong, you kind of feel for Tillman Fratita. I know he's a billionaire, but shortly after he bought the Rockets for an NBA record $2.2 billion, his GM goes out and has a tweet that causes an international event, not to mention a gigantic hit on the value of his new franchise. But still, the cost of how he's doing business now will be years of misery in the future for Rockets fans. For now, the Rockets have the final 20 plus games plus the playoffs to look forward to. And who knows, maybe they can match up against bigger teams. It worked on night one of micro ball against the Lakers. They caused turnovers, knowing that the ball was gonna be forced to Anthony Davis, and the Lakers centers played limited minutes. They got a win in LA, but it could go really wrong if all this early success is just the league needing to catch up. 
But whatever happens from here, no matter what, I can say, yes, I was wrong about Russell Westbrook. All those people in the comments were right. He has evolved his game, and the Rockets now are evolving around him for a chance to win a chip. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.